welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be making birria de res and consomme. It's the tacos that you dip into the red consomme. It is just insanely delicious. It's one of the best things I've probably ever eaten in my whole entire life. And then I am going to be making this a two-part video because tacos is not the only way to eat this meat. It's really delicious in a lot of different ways and so I'm going to be showing you guys four different ways to serve your BDS so it's not just going to be the tacos. I hope you guys like the recipe. I hope you guys subscribe to my channel and then you guys can also find my Miss A's place on Facebook and Instagram as well. So you guys have a great day and I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Let's go and start making this BDS. All right you guys so for this recipe I am going to be using two pounds of cross-cut beef shank, a pound and a half of country style beef ribs, I couldn't find the bone-in ribs today, so I think these are going to work just fine. And then we have two and a half pounds of chuck pot roast, one whole white onion, 16 cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of beef bouillon, one tablespoon of kosher salt, four carrots, three chipotle peppers, and three tablespoons of adobo sauce, three pasilla chili pods, six chili de arbol, ten New Mexico chili pods, ten wajilla chili pods, a third of a cup of white vinegar, seven bay leaves, six whole cloves, a one inch piece of cinnamon stick, a one inch piece of ginger root, one tablespoon of whole cumin, one tablespoon of thyme, one tablespoon of oregano, and two teaspoons of black peppercorns. Alright you guys, and I'm just going to start by searing our meat. So you want to go ahead and let the meat sit out for a good hour to two hours to let it come to room temperature so you don't want it to be cold. So I'm just going to start with the chuck pot roast here, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut it in half, and then I'm going to cut this into four pieces. I'm just going to lightly season this with a little bit of salt and then just a few grinds of black pepper. So we're gonna go ahead and sear this meat and what this is going to do is it's going to kind of create a barrier so that all of the juice and the flavor of the meat gets locked inside the middle so that when it cooks, because it cooks for a very long time, it's gonna stay nice and tender and it's gonna be really, really flavorful. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a tiny bit of olive oil in my pan and anytime you sear meat, you want to make sure the meat is at room temperature, the pan is nice and hot, and that the meat is dry, that it's not too wet. So even if you have to get some paper towels and pat it dry, then that's okay. So we're just going to go ahead and put the meat in the pan. And I don't want to get too much in there at once, so I'm just going to start with these three pieces. And while that meat is searing, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of our meat seasoned. Again, you're just going to sprinkle a little bit of salt. I really like to use kosher salt. It's, um, I think it just works a lot better than using like an iodized salt. It's a lot easier to regulate um, how much you're using and stuff like that. It's not quite as salty, if that makes sense. Um, so I really like it. I learned everything that I know about cooking from just reading cookbooks, watching Food Network, watching cooking shows, things like that. And so that was one thing that they always, always did was they used kosher salt and fresh cracked pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a tiny bit of pepper on each one of these. And I'm gonna season the ones that are in the pan as well on that other side. You guys, this recipe, this recipe is absolutely fabulous. I made birria five times over the summer and every single time I used a different recipe and then I came up with my own recipe. So I took um, bits and pieces of all the recipes that I learned and I just kind of came up with my own recipe. So that's the recipe that I'm going to be teaching you guys today. So I'm just going to go ahead and peel all of my carrots while we're waiting for that meat to sear. So whenever you're searing meat, you want to use, I like to use my cast iron pan. Searing meat is probably one of the best uh, uses for cast iron. The pan just maintains the heat really well. It's a very heavy pan and it just works perfectly for searing meat. So when you sear meat, you want to make sure your pan is hot, your meat is dry, 
and that it's at room temperature, but you also want to let it sit in the pan without moving it at all for a good four to five minutes to get a really nice crust on the bottom of it. Um, as soon as the meat is not sticking to the bottom of the pan, like these ones are not, um, it should be okay to go ahead and flip it over. So let's just check this one. See that nice sear on there? So we got some really nice brown color going on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip these all over and keep going, searing our meat. I'm gonna start de-seeding our chili pods. So with dried chilies, you, you have to rehydrate them just to soften them up a little bit. But you wanna get in there and you wanna get all of these seeds out of them. So you just open them up and then they just come right out. Okay. I'm really trying to share simple things, things that are more for like beginner cooks. Um, being, you know, going through this whole quarantine experience and this whole experience with the uh, coronavirus, it just made me realize like how many people really just don't know how to cook. And I think it's just because people sometimes are a little bit intimidated. Um, and so I really wanted to just kind of show people like some very simple techniques that Honestly, anybody can do any of these things. This recipe is advanced. This is an advanced recipe. So if you guys are gonna make this, just keep in mind, this is going to take you all day. This is a very long cooking process. There's a lot of steps, it's complicated. There's a lot of ingredients in this, but it's not impossible. As long as you go into it with the right expectation and you know that it's gonna take a really long time, it should be okay. For me, I just didn't realize like it was gonna take such a long time because you know, the videos I watched and stuff, they were only 30 minutes or whatever. So I was like, well, it shouldn't take too long, but there's a lot of different cooking steps. There's a lot of different things that you have to do in this recipe. And so it's definitely a little bit more advanced, not to say that you can't do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. So now the meat looks perfect. You guys can see that it's got a nice sear on it. And you do want to try to flip it on its sides so that you can brown every single side of the meat. This part of the process takes quite a while, especially if you allow it to brown evenly and you allow it to, you know, to do it right. So that part can take, take a little bit of time. So again, just as long as you're aware. So once you've got the chili seeded, you're just going to want to put them in a pot. And I'm going to rinse these off a couple of times just to kind of clean the outsides of them. And then I'm going to add water and I'm going to, I'm going to bring these up to a boil and then I'm just going to turn it off and just let these kind of rehydrate in the water. All right, you guys, so I got the meat still going in here, still searing. I got my two beef shanks pieces here and I'm just going to season these a little bit. Salt and pepper, same thing. And then I just wanted to show you guys, I do have, so I pulled that first round of meat out, it's in the pan, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start adding the other things that we need to put into our sauce pot. You can see my chilies are boiling. I'm just gonna turn the heat off and I'm just gonna let these sit in the water for about 10 to 15 minutes and they're gonna get really nice and soft. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. All right, so you're gonna put your onion in whole. So I'm just gonna, Cut off the ends and just get this outer layer off of it. Okay. Normally I will take the first layer out of the onion, but because we're just using this for flavor and we're not actually gonna eat the onion, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna lose any of it. So I'm just gonna get the papery layer of the skin off of this one. This part, see how it's kind of thin? I don't know, when you cook it up, it just sometimes it can kind of get that papery type of a texture to it too, and I'm just not a big fan of that. So whenever I'm cooking the onions to eat them, I always try to cut that first layer off. So I'm just gonna go ahead, get this stuff out of here. And the other eight cloves we're gonna add in later on. So just give it a smash. Okay. 
and then you just kind of just kind of like bend them and then the, the skin pops off really good. I'm just going to go ahead and cut the carrots up. All right, and I did experience a little bit of technical difficulties right here, so what I added into the pot will be listed in the description below. All right, you guys, so while that meat is searing, I am going to go ahead and get my sauce ready. So I'm just gonna add all of our spices, so our oregano, thyme, cumin, black peppercorns, the rest of the bay leaves, the clove, the cinnamon stick, and the ginger, all right into my blender. I'm also going to add my third of a cup of white vinegar, my three chipotles in adobo, and three tablespoons of adobo sauce, right in there. Going to add in all of our chili, want to kind of get that water out. All of these in. You can see they're all nice and soft now. They've completely uh, rehydrated. And then I'm just going to get these garlic peeled and I'm going to add these into the blender as well. All right, you guys, so as you can see, I have our beef ribs in the pot now. Everything is in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this last big chunk of roast. You can see I got it seared really good on all the sides. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the beef shank. And looks good. And the second one here. Add a tiny bit of salt. Give it a little crack of pepper there. So I'm just going to finish searing these and then I'm going to get them into the pot. And then you want to go ahead and add enough water so that everything is submerged. So it's probably going to end up being about 8 to 10 cups of water. Um, after you add in the water, you want to go ahead and turn it on high, bring it to a boil and then turn it down to about a medium and just let it simmer for about one hour. All right, and so my last bit of meat here is just about done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this off, stick it into the pot. I did add uh, 10 cups of water to the pot and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two cups of water to the pan. And this is a process called deglazing, and what that means is that it's just going to pull up all of that flavor that is on the bottom of our pan here. And then after that gets all pulled up, I'm gonna go ahead and dump this in as well. All right, you guys, so this has been going for about an hour. I did just have to add in um, another four cups of water because it had kind of dissolved, um, diluted a little bit, and so I just went ahead and did that. At this point, you want to have all of my ingredients here, my garlic, everything is in here. And I'm just going to grab just about a cup of liquid. And then I'm going to blend this up really quickly. All right, so go ahead and blend that up for about two minutes. And then it's going to be nice and smooth, you can see. And you're just going to go ahead and dump this right into the pot. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this so I can get all of that chili out. Alright, so I got all of that chili in there and I'm just going to go ahead and stir this up a little bit. And don't worry if there's any big chunks left over in, from your blender. We're going to strain this out once it's all cooked, so it's going to be okay. So you just want to bring this back up to a boil, and then we're going to go for about another two hours here. Probably about an hour and a half. We'll check it in an hour and a half. All right. So this has been going for another hour and a half or so. You guys can see this is going to make your kitchen a total mess. So be prepared for that. 
Um, so here it is. And you guys can see how it's boiling, but this is on a medium heat. The liquid isn't going to evaporate as much. It's just it's just better to cook it this way on a nice, um, like, mellow boil. So, all right, so I'm just going to pull one of these pieces of meat out and check it. You guys can see it's super, super tender. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to pull the meat out of the sauce really quickly. And then I'm going to strain out the sauce. Had to grab some new tongs as you guys can see this is a super messy process um i think the first time i made this i had this red stuff like literally all over my whole entire kitchen so <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and pull this out yeah it turned out really really good um at this point you guys want to let this keep this meat kind of cool down you could throw this all onto a cutting board and you could just chop away at it and chop it up into pieces but I like to hand shred it and just pull out a lot of that, um, a lot of the fat. And so that's what I'm going to do. I will warn you guys that this part is very time consuming if you choose to do it that way. So if you don't want to, by all means, don't. Um, and then at this point, I'm just going to turn this off for just a minute. All right, so I'm just going to run this through the strainer and that's just going to take any big chunks of chilies or the vegetables and things just right out of this. So I'm just going to hold on to all of these veggies here. Just be patient with this. I'm going to kind of work it through, give it a little bit of assistance, but this is going to be your consomme. And so you definitely want to, oh, definitely want to reserve as much of this liquid as possible. So if you just kind of play with it, then you can get a lot of that out of there. Okay, we're gonna throw it through here one more time. Um, one of the ingredients that I forgot to tell you guys about at the beginning, but it will be in the description, is we're gonna boil five Roma tomatoes. And we're gonna add this back into this consomme and it's just gonna kind of make it complete. It's just amazing, it's so good. All right, you guys, so I just went ahead and rinsed that pot out and I'm gonna just run this through here one more time. So as you can see, this is, again, a very, very messy job. Oh no, I don't know if it's even going through. I could have played it. Shouldn't be too much in there, but anything that we missed or anything that I knocked in there, we'll get. There isn't too much in there, but now it's nice and perfectly clean, so. All right, I'm just gonna put the lid on this and I'm just gonna put this on low just to kind of keep it warm. All right, so I just have five Roma tomatoes in a pot here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on high and I just put enough water to cover the tomatoes and we're just going to boil this just for a few minutes, I'd say maybe five minutes until the skin starts to peel away. All right, you guys, so this meat has cooled down enough for me to touch it, and so you can see that it just is falling right apart. And so I'm just going to go ahead and just sort of quickly go through it. I'm not going to be too anal about this process. I used really, really good cuts of meat today, so the fat that is in it shouldn't be too, too bad. It's going to mostly be those pieces of um, the, uh, what was it, the roast that are gonna be a little bit more, more fatty for you. So, but you can see how nice it just pulls right off of the fat, like this piece right here. So the meat just comes right off of it. This meat looks awesome. It looks great. It's, this is gonna be so good. So see how it just, sort of satisfying doing this. Um, it just comes right out for you. And then you can just kinda separate those a little bit, so. I think these are the ribs that I'm doing right now. So adding these nicer cuts of meat in here makes all the difference in the world. It's going to give you a, just an amazing flavor in the meat. It's going to be so, so delicious. So that was one of the things that I changed about the recipe that I, the first one that I used, adding these bones in as well adds tons and tons of flavor. I'll give that to my doggy in a little while. And then we're gonna put this back into the sauce and let it cook again. And so some, like if there's little teeny tiny, like pieces of meat, or I'm sorry, pieces of fat, like kind of in between the meat, that's just gonna kind of melt away 
in the in the in the consomme. So I'm gonna take a break from this for just a second because my tomatoes are boiling. So I'm gonna just show you guys what they look like here. So you can see that the um, skins have sort of detached. When they get to this point, you want to go ahead and take them out. And I'm just going to throw these in my blender real quick and blend them up. Okay, guys, so I just blended up my tomatoes. These have enough water in them from cooking in the water that you don't need to add anything to it. And then I'm just going to throw these through my strainer. And again, you just want to kind of play with it a little bit, coax it through, and it'll just get come out nicely for you there. So this juice is going to make a big difference. This is going to kind of help the sauce to just kind of become this beautiful balanced, um, you know, creation. And honestly, this stuff is amazing. You guys, it is such a time consuming process. Your kitchen is going to get absolutely trashed. You're going to use a lot of different pots and pans. Um, there's a lot of ingredients in this thing, but it is going to be so well worth it that I guarantee you, you will want to make this recipe again. You just want to kind of press it down and get all of that juice out of there. So I'm just going to stir that up and then I'm going to go ahead and just let this sit on low while I get this meat shredded. And I'm going to do that off camera because it is going to take me probably a good 30 minutes or so. So, BRB. All right, you guys, so I've shredded about half of the meat. Um, but I just wanted to get on here real quick and just show you guys how fantastic this turned out. And I promise you it's because um, of the beginning when we seared it. Because the first time I made this, I did not sear it. I only used the pot roast and it just it didn't turn out like this at all. So, um, this is the shank. So you can see how the meat is just literally just pulling apart. And the fat that's going to be on the shank is going to be kind of like the good fat, the one that's not going to be chewy and, you know, unpleasant to eat. It's just that really good melt in your mouth fat. So um, you can see the meat is just absolutely this. I'm My mouth is just like literally watering because... It looks so good, and I just know this is going to turn out so, so yummy tonight. I'm really excited for it. So, And then you can see how nice it just comes apart. So, so that's the shank. Um, this is the, let's see, this is one of the ribs right here. So these were just boneless beef ribs, and you can see these two. They're just falling right apart. And I can just press the meat down and look at how awesome that looks. I mean, who would not want to just pop that right into their mouth? So the ribs turned out great. It's just pulling right away from all the fat. And again, this fat isn't too intrusive. You can tell it's sort of turned into like a jelly. Uh, that type of fat is actually delicious. And then this is a piece of the roast. And this was a big old fat piece, and you can see it's just completely, beautifully just pulling right apart. Now this one does have a little bit more grisly fat and stuff on it, so you do want to get this fat out of there. And that's why I like to do this by hand. But you can see how easy it just kind of pulls away. And then you're just left with this beautiful, beautiful, tender, delicious so flavorful um, meat to add into your your queso tacos or your quesadillas or whatever it is that you decide to make with this so I mean look at that yeah I'm right okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna get all of this meat shredded and then I'll pop back on in just a sec alrighty guys so I got all of my beef shredded Tell you what, that was quite a job. Um, as you can see, the consomme looks really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna add this, uh, all this meat back into it. 
and I'm gonna turn it up to about just a very, like a medium low, and I'm gonna let it cook for about 45 minutes. Um, but you do wanna go ahead and just give this a little bit of a taste. And you're just gonna test it for like, if it needs any more salt or anything like that. But for me, it's perfect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this meat back in. You can see it's all nicely shredded. And then <clears throat> some of that fat that was kind of trapped inside of the meat is also going to just kind of work its way out and just melt down into the sauce. So, excuse me, into the consomme. So I'm gonna turn this back up and let this go for about 30 to 45 minutes. Alrighty guys, so I just got done with the meat for the Gadia to serve it just in a bowl with, with um, some cilantro. I got some onions in here, I got some fried tortilla strips that I did, and then I'm just going to score down a line here. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a taste. If you guys haven't tried this stuff yet, make it. You will not be disappointed. It was so good and so amazing. Such a winner. Mm, so good. So good. The little crunchy tortilla chip. Mm. The cilantro. You just have no shame when you eat this because you're just going to get red juice all over your face and it's fine. Don't even worry about it. Mm. It honestly might be my favorite way to make it, just simply like this because the cooking process is so long that stopping here and just eating it in a bowl is a fantastic idea for me. Maybe make some simple cheese quesadillas or something like that, or just some tortillas or nothing, just eat this. Oh my God. It's the best. It's honestly one of the best things I've ever eaten in my life. Two thumbs up. Bia, make it. You guys make this recipe it is such a pain in the butt but oh my goodness is it worth it just make it just do it just take a day get a case of beer sit around make media get somebody to help you with the meat part that part takes a long time if you want to take out all the fat and stuff like that but otherwise i just can't even say enough i mean it's amazing it's incredible it's beautiful it's just it's insanely delicious so if you guys like my channel, if you like my recipes, please give me a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to try the recipes. And if you do, please let me know what you guys think about them. And please let me know how it went. Send me pictures and even a video if you guys want to. That'd be awesome. So thank you so much.